Hello there, so today we will play a little bit further with Optimum Lab. Um, the idea is that we can use Optimum Lab to create a virtual model of our vehicle and uh, use that as a reference for our lap times in real life. Um, so I've already um, pre-populated some of this to make the video a little bit shorter, um, but what I had to do was create a new vehicle, uh, and uh, so okay, it, it's showing when 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 it's when you try to create a new vehicle, everything is empty. Um, so I need to leave that one. Um, so you have to look up these values for your own car. Uh, you have to choose the car type, put in the the mass of the vehicle, including uh, fuel and driver. Uh, so for my M3 Compact, I put 1,475. Um, and then the aero data is probably the most difficult. Uh, I would say if you don't, if you cannot find the uh, exact info for your car, try to start from one of the uh, vehicles that you can you can find on the Optimum G website. Um, through this, through the link in the software. Um, in my case, uh, most of this info could be found, um, more or less. And so for a 3 Series E46 M3, these numbers are available. Um, and info on gear ratios uh, is also pretty easy to find. Um, you know, torque curves. Um, so I use all of the all of these to kind of pre-populate um, this vehicle model. Um, so yeah, for the engine, I, I made it pretty simple, but uh, it's possible to make it more detailed than this, of course. Um, and things like tire tire radius. Uh, just look up the tire size of my tire, and then divide the diameter by two. Um, nothing. Nothing too special. Uh, air density, uh, you can look this up um, in Google. It's about 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, because I was using um, semi select tires, I put 1.2 um, and 1.2 uh, for long shoot and lateral friction. Um, um, put in the gear ratios, put in the drive efficiency. I did have a Shorter final drive, uh, I think I have 4.1, so that's what I put, and then it's done. So then it was possible to run the simulation. So, um, oh, sorry, I had to import the two tracks circuit the uh, Spa Francochon and circuit Zolder, uh, then just simulate uh, the vehicle with the two. After you click simulate, it'll come up with these two results. Um, so looking at these results, it is saying a lap of Zolder should take 1 minute 51.4 uh, and a lap of spa franc should take 2 minutes 48.2. Um, if, if I would compare this to my real lap times, um, my lap around Zolder was about 2 seconds faster than predicted and my lap time around uh, spa franc is about almost four seconds slower than predicted. That's right. Um, and uh, this makes sense because for the lap around Zolder, I really couldn't really think of anywhere where I could have gain additional time, whereas uh, for the lap around Spa Franc Chon, I definitely did feel like I left some time uh, on the table and the conditions were pretty slippery uh, on the day that I set the best, la best lap. Um, also, uh, if I would look at the lap around um, Spa Franc Chon in detail, in terms of what Optimum uh, Optimum G is, uh, sorry, Optimum Lap is predicting. Um, the oh, um, 
So the interesting thing for me was to look at what it predicted for um, for Eau Rouge. So Eau Rouge, uh, in reality, if you look at it, So for this right-hander, because the vehicle is being pushed into the ground, uh, you can you can definitely corner harder than on a flat surface. Whereas here at the brow, for the left-hander, you definitely cannot. So if there were if the software had taken the elevation change into account, then this right-hander, which it's showing. Uh, minus 1.2 G's um, that would be you know that would show a higher value than what it's showing for the left-hander which is also 1.2 G's so what that suggests to me is that um, this digital uh, racetrack in optimum lap is a perfectly flat surface uh, it is on the flat perfectly flat surface um, and if we open up the circuit, if the if we up, open up the track file, that does seem to be the case. So there's length and corner radiuses, but there's nothing about elevation. And so that could also be a um, a reason why uh, I'm not able to get anywhere close to what it is predicting in terms of lap time for circuit. Uh, um, because if you look at this corner, it leads on to a very important long straight. Uh, oh, and and this whole straight is uphill as well, uh, which which is not um, taken into account by optimum lap, which means that uh, first uh, in optimum lap the virtual vehicles go. Th able to go through this left-hander way faster than I'm able to in real life, thus carrying more speed onto this straight, and um, it is doing, it is able to keep accelerating um, on this straight without needing to uh, overcome uh, the, the, the slope uh, that you have in reality, because in, in, in reality this Camel straight is, uh, is has quite a gradient to it, and therefore, um, I'm pretty sure if we look at the speed, um, where is the speed? So it's saying the vehicle is able to reach almost 250 kilometers per hour. Um, from memory, I don't believe my vehicle was able to reach that kind of top speed. But this is where, if you have a completely flat track, like a flat surface uh, with no elevation, um, then you would expect a higher top speed. Um, so that's one, uh, yeah, that's an additional um, limitation of the software that you need to take into account. Um, the other thing, um, the other thing is also in the vehicle model, there is no um there is no interestingly yeah there's no uh weight distribution or cog so i'm guessing um the vehicle model is relatively simple in this um so it's so the fact that the uh, m3 compact has pretty bad uh, weight distribution from a traction point of view is not taken into account. So um, a vehicle with a more rearward bias but the same mass and same power uh, should perform better than the M3 Compact but I'm but if you just look at um, the parameters available in this software that th th there would be no distinction between, between the two. Uh, so that's an additional limitation of the software. With that said, it is free, so you know cannot complain too much when when you get all this for for free. So, um, and and we're 
what we're showing is that even with all of these limitations, it is providing very uh, valuable data. Um, I think the um, the the promise is that you, you're around the predicted lap time should be around ten within ten percent of what the vehicle should do, um, and I think if you took more time to fully um, correlate the vehicle parameters such as longitude and lateral friction, you might even get a better result. Uh, but even so, you know, with the limited amount of um, data that we put in, the the predicted lap times are pretty close to what I ended up doing in my car. So um, pretty impressed with the software. Um, I think if if you really dig into it, there's a lot of uh, cool things you could do. Uh, I mean, this was just the first idea. I think next time, potentially, we could look into the uh, lap time sensitivity to uh, some important performance attributes of the vehicle, such as the, the mass. Um, I think we showed that last, in the last video already. Uh, but we could change the amount of downforce. Um, um, power and uh, grip. Um, but yeah, hope this was interesting. Uh, I mean, we, we talked through how to create a vehicle, um, simulate that vehicle's lap time on a few, uh, on a few uh, tracks of your choice, which you can then use as the reference for your own lap times. Hope it was interesting. Until uh, next time.